Okay, everybody. So here we are, uh, trig video number three, finding a side. So once again, this is to help you find um, some of the big ideas behind the booklet that you got um, for the trigonometry portion of the um, distance learning. All right. Now, we're going to follow the same three steps that we had before, uh, and that's label the triangle, choose the appropriate trig, and then do the math. And, and this is the part where we learn how to actually do the math, okay? Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same example three different sides, three different ways. So you can see it. I've got three different ways there. Uh, this is going to help reinforce that things will work. And over here are our three trig um, uh, ratios, all right? So... Remember, the first thing that we wanted to do when we start a little trig is, number one, label from theta. And our labels are opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. Okay? Oop, that doesn't look like an A. Still doesn't look like an A. Stupid A. There. Okay, now, so here's our theta. It doesn't have the symbol. It has a 30. Now, that's important in a few minutes. So if we look across from here, this will be our opposite. Okay, here's my square corner. I can just tell that's going to be a, a right angle triangle. So we're going to call this guy our hypotenuse, and that makes sense because it looks like it would be the hypotenuse. So the last one left would be adjacent. So this 15 meters has to be our adjacent side. And the definition of adjacent was the side that connects theta and the right angle. Okay, now, this is a little bit tricky. We have to pick one of these three to be our trig ratio. Well, which one do we pick? Well, the idea is, let's just get back to a little highlighter here. What is it that we know about this triangle? Well, we know that we have an adjacent side. And we know that we're looking for the opposite side. So what we think to ourselves is, what's a trig ratio that it has adjacent and opposite? Well, this has got opposite and hypotenuse, so that's not going to work. Uh, this has got adjacent and hypotenuse. Well, that's not going to work because we don't need anything with hypotenuse. So basically, here we go. Tangent has opposite and adjacent. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this down. Tangent is equal to opposite divided by adjacent. So now, this angle says 30. So I'm going to write tan... Or I'm going to switch to my pen... And I'm going to switch to this. I'm going to... Okay, sorry about that, folks. We're just going to get back to writing stuff so we can see it. Okay, so I'm going to write tan 30 is equal to... Well, this is where it's important. So opposite, we don't know what that was, so we'll, we can just leave it as a question mark. And then for adjacent, this guy right here, we'll put... 15. Okay? Now, a lot of kids who've been with me before have heard about this amazing Dr. Z. So what we're going to do now is we're going to treat this question mark like it was an X. So here, let's get rid of that. And let's put in an X. Okay, so remember, amazing Dr. Z is equal to the one across Amazing Dr. Z is equal to the one across if you multiply it by the corner and divide by the last. And here it'll be 10, 30 over 1. Because every number can be written over 1, unless it's a dumb, stupid, irrational number. Okay. So if we re rewrite this, we'll have x is equal to 10, 30. times 15 divided by 1. 
Well, okay, so that's when you're going to get your calculator and you're going to use those buttons, okay? So you're going to, depending on your calculator, and you might have to YouTube your calculator for the right process, but you're going to write probably, you're going to go, um, it might be 30, then you might hit your tan button, and then times 15. So essentially, we're going to turn that 30 degree angle into a decimal. That's what the 30 tan does, and times 15. And what we're going to get is 0 0.866. 0 0.866 meters. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm off by a decimal. Eight point six six meters. Okay. So give that a whirl and uh, see if you can get it. Um, if you can't, message me and we'll we'll help you out. But essentially, thirty ten times fifteen, eight point six six meters. Okay. So let's do the same example now with the same angle, and we'll try and find the hypotenuse side, all right? So, remember, we haven't changed anything. The number one thing we're going to do is label. So, from theta, we know that this guy is the opposite. And here we happen to know what the answer is, 8.66 meters. Here's our square corner. So, this guy is going to be our hypotenuse. So that last guy has got to be adjacent because it's the one that connects theta to the right angle. Okay, now we want to choose the appropriate trig triangle. So we have to say to ourselves, what is it that we want? Well, we want the hypotenuse. So we look over here, which ones have hypotenuse in them? Sine and cosine. The tangent doesn't have hypotenuse, so we'll just get rid of it. Not to be a hater, but it's not useful to us. Well, then what else do we want? Or what else do we know? Well, do we know anything about adjacent? No, there's no question mark. There's no number to help us out. It's just really labeled. What do we know? We know the opposite. So that's information. So we're going to use the sine ratio because it's got opposite and hypotenuse and opposite is some information for us okay so we're going to do the math so going back to the first i'm going to write my trig ratio sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse so i'm just going to fill in the details now so i'm going to go sine 30 is equal to 8.66 divided by question mark. Well, that's our hypotenuse, and that's what we're looking for. Now, we could do a question mark, but generally, because it's algebra, let's do this. X. Okay? All right. Good. Now, what do we do? Amazing doctor said. So, we can put this sign 30 over 1, and we can say that amazing doctor Z is equal to the one across if you multiply the corners and divide by the last. So if we rewrite that now just to clean it up, we'll have x is equal to 1 times 8 point six six divided by sine thirty okay well in my calculator so I'm gonna have eight point six six now if I hit in my calculator sine thirty degrees I'm gonna get zero point 
5. Okay, so 8.66 divided by 0 0.5, I'm going to get 17.32. 17.32 meters. So what do we do? Just to recap here. We labeled the triangle. We chose the trig ratio, and we did amazing Dr. Z math. And we had to use our sine button, okay? So when we went um, sine of 30, we had to use the sine button. If we hit cosine or tangent, no good, all right? Now, let's do a third example, and hopefully it'll be a little bit more familiar now. And what do you know? It's the same tree, the same theta, uh, and now we've got 17.32. But what changes? Nothing. What we're going to do is we're still going to look for a missing part. But the first part we always do is label. So from theta, we go here, and this is opposite. Okay, now I know my square corner is going to be right here. So this is my hypotenuse. And label that. So the last one is my adjacent. It's the one that I don't know. Okay, now number two says choose the appropriate trig triangle to fill in the data. So a lot of times kids will say, Mr. Chambers, I just don't know which one to pick. Well, sometimes I say, which one don't you need? Well, I know that I need adjacent, so that could be this one or this one. And they say, I know I need hypotenuse because it's got an actual measurement for me, so it could be this one or this one. And then I just finish off by saying, well, which one don't you need? Well, I don't need opposite because it doesn't have a question mark and it doesn't have any measurements, so I don't need opposite, so I can cross out the ones that have an O. So what do I need? Boom. Cosine. Well, it's the only one we haven't done yet, so it's kind of a, a trick question, but hopefully you get the point. Okay, now we're going to do the math, all right? So back to the math. So the first thing we're going to do is write down that um, formula. Here, let's get rid of this little squishy here. There. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down that uh, formula and we're going to go cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to fill in the information. So cosine 30 degrees, and that comes from here. That's our theta. Cosine of 30 degrees is equal to adjacent. Well, that's what we're looking for. So we're just going to put an X there over hypotenuse, which is 17.32. Okay. Well, what do you suppose we're going to do now, folks? That's right. Amazing Dr. Z. So amazing Dr. Z, and he's quite amazing. Start from the X, you basically multiply the corners and divide by the last. It's really a shortcut for doing cross multiply and divide without having to do the algebra. So let's rewrite this guy or this girl, this gender neutral math. So X is equal to cosine 30 times. 17, whoops, that's a pretty bad 17. Point three two. Divide by 1. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm going to hit cosine 30, or 30 cosine, and then I'm going to leave all those decimals in there, and I'm going to multiply it by 17... 0.34, or 17.32, I'm sorry, and what I'm going to end up with is 
point nine nine nine. Well, really, that's pretty close to fifteen. Now, if you check it out, it doesn't matter. Like for the math kids in the room, you're probably saying, "Well, oh, okay." So we found out that this was this first one was eight point six six. Okay, so opposite was eight point six six. Then it was. Then we used that information and the 30 degree angle to get the hypotenuse. And we found out the hypotenuse was 17.32. And then we used the hypotenuse and the angle to get the adjacent. And we got 15. And if you go back up to the start, we started with 15. We started with 15. It shows that trigonometry works. If you know a side and an angle, if you know a, an angle and a side, you can figure out all the other stuff. You can, because it's math, and that's pretty cool. Now, let's just have a look here at an example of the kind of question you would be able to do. Okay, here's an example. So we've got this um, a building, it's 50 feet high, and the observer notices at a 41 degree angle to the top, we want to know how far away are they from the base of the building. So what do we do? And hopefully you guys said number one is label from theta. So this is my opposite. Here's my square corner. So this one has to be my hypotenuse. So this one has to be adjacent. So that's label. Number two, choose my trig ratio. Well, I don't need hypotenuse. I don't need hypotenuse. So I need one, I need something that's got an adjacent and an O. And if I go back up here to my trig ratios, an adjacent and an O, right there, tangent, okay? So I'm just gonna write that down. Tangent, opposite, over adjacent. Okay, so now we're going to fill it in. So we're going to say tan of 41 degrees is equal to a 50-foot tall building and adjacent, we don't know, which is x. By the way, we should get an answer of 58 feet. Okay, so no pressure. Let's see if we do it. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, for number three, we're going to do the math, and of course, that's amazing, Dr. Z. So I'm just going to put 10 of 41 over 1, and we're going to say that x is equal to the one across if you times the corner and divide by the last. So if we rewrite this, we're going to say x is equal to 1, times 50 divided by 10 of 41 degrees. Okay, so if I do that in my calculator, I'm going to get 50 divided by 10 of 41, and guess what? X equals 58 Steve, what did we do? We labeled. We chose the trig triangle. And we did amazing, Dr. Zed, through the setup. And that's how we find the side. Now, in your booklet, you'll have lots of examples and lots of exercises to work through. Hopefully, understanding this video will help you to do your booklet. There's lots of other good middle-aged teachers like me teaching it on YouTube. So if this didn't work for you, Go digging around. You'll be all right. The next video up is going to be a trig lesson. I'm finding 
decide. 